Chapter Seven of Jewish Children by Shalom Alechem. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Jewish Children, Yiddish Kinder by Shalom Alechem, translated by Hannah Berman and read by Adrian Pretzelis. Chapter Seven, Three Little Heads. If my pen were an artist's brush, or at the very least a photographic camera, I would create for you, my friend, a picture, for a present in honour of Shavuos, of a rare group of three pretty little heads, of three poor naked barefoot Jewish children. All three little heads are black and have curly hair. The eyes are big and shiny and burning. They gaze out in wonder, and seem to be always asking of the world the one question, Wherefore? You look at them, and marvel at them, and feel guilty towards them, just as if you were really responsible for them, for the existence of three little superfluous mortals in the world. The three pretty little heads are of two brothers and a little sister, Abramtig, Moishetig, and Deverka. They were brought up by their father in the true Russian style, petted and spoiled. Their father was Pisa, the box-maker, and if he had not been afraid of his wife, Pessa, and if he had not been such a terribly poor man, he would have changed his Jewish name of Pisa into the Russian name of Petya. But since he was a little afraid of his wife, Pessa, and since he was extremely poor, may it remain far from us, he kept to his own name of Pisa, the box-maker, until the good time comes when everything will be different, as Bebel says, as Karl Marx says, and as all the good and wise people say, when everything, everything will be different. But until the good and happy time comes, one must get up at the dawn of day and work far into the night, cutting out pieces of cardboard and pasting boxes and covers of books. He, sir, the box-maker, stands at his work all day long. He sings as he works old and new songs, Jewish and non-Jewish, mostly gay, sorrowful songs in a gay, sorrowful voice. Will you ever give up singing those Gentile songs, such a man? And how he loves the Gentiles! Since we have come to this big town, he has become almost a Gentile. All three children, Abramtzig, Moeshtzig, and Deverka, were born and brought up in the same place, between the wall and the stove. They always saw before them the same people and the same things. The gay father who cut cardboards, pasted boxes, and sang songs, and the careworn, hollow-cheeked mother who cooked and baked and rushed about, and was never finished her work. They were always at work, both of them, the mother at the stove and the father at the cardboards. What were all the boxes for? Who wanted so many boxes? Is the whole world full of boxes? That is what the three little heads wanted to know. And they waited until their father had a great pile of boxes ready, when he would take them on his head and in his arms, thousands of them, to the market. He came back without the boxes, but with money for the mother, and with cakes and buns for the children. He was a good father. Such a good father! He was gold! The mother was also gold, but she was cross. One got a smack from her sometimes, a dig in the ribs, or a twist of an ear. She does not like to have the house untidy. She does not allow the children to play fathers and mothers. She forbids Abramzig to pick up the pieces of cardboard that have fallen to the floor, and Moishetzig to steal the paste from his father, and Iverka to make bread of sand and water. The mother expects her children to sit still and keep quiet. It seems she does not know that young heads will think, and young souls are eager and restless. They want to go. Where? Out of doors, to the light, to the window, to the window. There was only one window, and all three heads were stuck against it. And what did they see out of it? 
a wall, a high, big, grey, wet wall. It was always and ever wet, even in summer. Does the sun ever come here? Surely the sun comes here sometimes, that is to say, not the sun itself, but its reflection. Then there is a holiday. The three beautiful heads press against the little window. They look upwards very high, and see a narrow blue stripe, like a long blue ribbon. "'Do you see, children?' says Abramzig. He knows. He goes to Cheda. He is learning Comet's Aleph. The Cheda is not far away, in the next house, that is to say, in the next room. Ah, what stories Abramzig tells about Cheda! He tells how he saw with his own eyes, may he see all that is good, a big building with windows from top to bottom. Abramzig swears that he saw, may he see all that is good, a chimney, a high chimney from which there came out smoke. Abramzig tells what he saw with his own eyes, may he see all that is good, a machine that sewed without hands. Abramzig tells that he saw with his own eyes, may he see all that is good, a car that went along without horses. And many more wonderful things Abramzig tells from the Cheda. And he swears, just as his mother swears, that he may see all that is good. And Moshe Tzig and Deverka listen to him and sigh. They envy Abram Tzig because he knows everything, everything. For instance, Abram Tzig knows that a tree grows. It is true he never saw a tree growing. There are no trees on the street, none. But he knows, he heard it at Cheda, that fruit grows on a tree, for which reason one makes the blessing who has created the fruit of the tree. Abram Tzig knows. What does he not know? That potatoes and cucumbers and onions and garlic grow in the ground. And that's why one says the blessing over them, who has created the fruit of the ground. Abramzig knows everything, only he does not know how and by what means things grow, because, like the other children, he never saw them. There is no field in their street. No garden, no tree, no grass, nothing, nothing! There are big buildings in their street, grey walls and high chimneys that belch out smoke. Each building has a lot of windows, thousands and thousands of windows, and machines that go without hands. And in the streets there are cars that go without horses, and beyond these, nothing, nothing! Even a little bird is seldom seen here. Sometimes an odd sparrow strays in, grey as the grey walls. He picks, picks at the stones. He spreads out his wings and flies away. Fowls? The children sometimes see one quarter of one with a long, pale leg. How many legs has a fowl? Four, just like a horse, explains Abramzig. And surely he knows everything. Sometimes their mother brings home from the market a little head with glassy eyes that are covered with a white film. It's dead, says Abramzig, and all the three children look at each other out of great black eyes, and they sigh. Born and brought up in the big city, in the huge building, in the congestion, loneliness and poverty, not one of the three children ever saw a living creature, neither a fowl, nor a cow, nor any other animal, excepting the cat. They have a cat of their own, a big live cat, as grey as the high, damp grey wall. The cat is their only play-toy. They play with it for hours on end. They put a shawl on her, call her the wedding guest, and laugh and laugh without end. When their mother sees them, she presents them, one with a smack, a second with a dig in the ribs, and the third with a twist of the ear. The children go off to their hiding-place behind the stove. The eldest, Abramzig, tells a story, and the other two, Moshe Zig and Deverka, listen to him. He says their mother is right, 
They ought not to play with the cat, because a cat is a wicked animal. Abramsig knows everything. There is nothing in the world that he does not know. Abramsig knows everything. He knows there is a land far away called America. In America they have lots of relatives and friends. In that same America the Jews are well off and happy. May no evil eye rest on them. Next year, if God wills it, they will go off to America when they get tickets. Without tickets no one can go to America, because there is a sea, and on the sea there is a storm that shakes one to the very soul. Abramsig knows everything. He knows what goes on in the other world. For instance, he knows that in the other world there is a Garden of Eden, for Jews, of course. In the Garden of Eden there are trees with the finest fruits and rivers of oil. Diamonds and rubies are to be found there in the streets. Stoop down and pick them up and fill your pockets. And there good Jews study the holy law day and night and enjoy the holiness. That is what Abramsig tells. And Moishetzig's and Deverka's eyes are burning. They envy their brother because he knows everything. He knows everything, even to what goes on in the heavens. Abramsig swears that twice a year, on the nights of Hashanah Rabba and Shavuos, the sky opens. It is true he himself never saw the sky opening, because there is no sky near them. But his comrades saw it. They swore, may they see all that is good, and they would not swear to a lie. How can one swear to a lie? It's a pity they have no sky in their street, only a long, narrow blue stripe, like a long, narrow blue ribbon. What can one see in such a tiny scrap of sky, beyond a few stars and the reflection of the moon? In order to prove to his little sister and brother that the sky opens, Abram Tzig goes over to his mother and pulls her by the skirt. Mother. Is it true that in the middle of Shavuos night the sky opens? I will open your head for you. When he got no satisfaction from his mother, Abramsig waited for his father, who had gone off to market with the treasure of boxes. Children, guess what present father will bring us from the market, said Abramsig. And the children tried to guess what their father would bring them from the market. They counted on their fingers everything that was in the market everything that an eye could see and a heart desire cakes and buns and sweets but no one guessed aright and i am afraid you will not guess aright either pisa the box-maker brought from the market this time neither cakes nor buns nor sweets he brought the children grass curious long sweet-smelling grass and all the three children gathered around their father. Father, what is that? It is grass. What is grass? It is a bunch of greens for Shavuos. Jews need grass for Shavuos. Where do they get it, father? Where do they get it? Hmm. They buy it. They buy it in the market, said their father and he strewed the green, sweet-smelling grass over the freshly swept floor. And he was delighted. It was green, and smelt sweet. He said to the mother, gaily, as is his way, Pessa, good Yom Tov to you. Good luck! A new thing! The young devils will now have something to make a mess with, replied the mother, crossly, as is her way. And she gave one of the children a smack, the second a dig in the ribs, and the third a twist of the ear. She is never satisfied. All was cross, and all was sour, exactly the opposite of father. The three pretty heads looked at the mother, and at the father, and at one another. The moment their parents turned away, they threw themselves on the floor, and put their faces to the sweet-smelling grass. They kissed it the green grass that Jews need for Shavuos, and which is sold at the market. Everything is to be found at the market, even greens. 
The father buys everything. Jews want everything, even greens, even greens. End of chapter 7